Hey everyone, we're doing a blind replay tonight. Uh, Pedro sent me this uh, P82 video a couple of weeks ago. That's funny. Salute and reported in the uh, chat down there. Um, and a question mark. Maybe didn't get the joke. But anyway, P82, uh, obviously Pedro enjoys his P82B. I do too. Um, it's a really fun plane to fly. Sort of this heavy multi-role kind of hybrid, although it can function just fine as a heavy that knocks down bombers. Uh, one of the ironies of warplanes, the way mechanics are set up, is that um, you know the the machine guns actually do better at knocking down bombers than the cannons do, um, just because of the consistent DPS in them, and you know, because bombers have so much, and are such hit, hit point pinatas, you need consistent DPS to to knock them down. Now, as you can see, the P82, nice and maneuverable. Um, he's got bombs and rockets both on it. I tend to just carry bombs on mine so I don't have to get down low at this angle to 500 meters. He did his part, moving on. I like that. I like that he's moving on early from this zone. You know, he kind of contributed to it. A little bit left. He went ahead and was like, I'm on to the next one, right? Uh, once you get down fairly low on the capture points like that, especially early in the game, if you can push on and save yourself 10 seconds or so, it might make the difference, right? In this case, this zone is already captured, but if we can hit the planes in transition, um, you know, then uh, we might can uh, get an early jump on that next zone over there. So I got an IL-8 down low, B-32 up high, A-7M in front, and the timer just went off, so might as well stay here and clear this one. I like this too. He didn't turn to bother with these guys. He's a heavy. He's running fast. Just clock this A-7, right? and then worry about uh, turning around at the back end of the zone. That guy's on fire. You can probably, yeah, he's going to burn himself out. So, I think we're going to dump ordnance here, maybe? Yep, got some rockets coming in, I bet, or a potato. That one potato. And two potato? Yeah, two potato. And there you go. The zone flipped. All right, some more fun in the chat here. That bot was cheating. He shot at me. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So there's a Key 93 on the other team. And this is a 4v4. Yeah, so that's pretty interesting as well. Got two heavies on the other team. Three heavies in a ground attack. This team, heavy bomber and two light fighters. So interesting. I'd be die. Well, oh, Knight's got him. Knight's got him. Yeah. I wouldn't want to steal. Yeah, that's that's probably good. I mean, you want to secure it, but you don't want to steal at the same time, right? So, I get I get kind of poking that and making sure it goes down. Especially since it was a player. Great long wind up there, right? Just boosting up and taking care of business. See the arrow down there that he's heading on. Looks like he's going to head for the other garrison here. It's not a bad idea. Go ahead and flip it. Hopefully your bots can flip that one. Uh, you do have a bomber over the zone, so if you can get both, do it quick enough, you can get a little aerial supremacy in there, build yourself a little bit of a buffer. So. This is, so I wanted to point this out. This map in particular, look at the tracers. Uh, this map in particular, heavy fighters do go outside the zone by a considerable amount. I mean, you can look there, you know, we've got, goodness, what is that? Uh, let me zoom in here. I mean, it's, yeah. He's outside the zone showing no sign of turning. This guy's outside the zone showing no sign of turning. This guy's uh, following outside the zone, right? This map in particular, for some reason, um, does this thing where, you know, the bots like to go outside the zone by a pretty far margin. They have a longer leash here. And so that's something to keep in mind um, if you are chasing them out or uh, looking to flip a zone by killing those, those guys. Two down, just need 20 points. And got it. Uh, looks like ground target, maybe, or something. Something down there flipped it. So we've got both the command centers. We've got a 30-point lead. Two of the three garrisons. This is feeling good. You know, from a team's perspective, the RB-17 is doing his thing. Knight is squatting in the center, which is exactly what a spit should do. Um, just doing area denial in the middle there. It's a wonderful thing because the IL-20 has got a you know, doesn't have the speed to wiggle around the zone, so he's got a cross pass with the uh, Spitfire 14, and that gives a little bit of an edge to the RB-17. Um, and then it looks like the Doe and the VB are... I'm not sure where the VB... I don't think we've seen him yet. 
Uh, but the doe here is in the center. I think just got shot down maybe or just went out. Yeah, he's got it this way. So um, if I were the enemy heavies, I'd be working on recapturing those two zones right there, starting with yours. Um, this, I know it's a middle zone and a popular reason, you know, people go to the middle for personal point scores and maybe that's why some of these guys are in here, you know, but from a strategic perspective, from a map perspective, this zone doesn't really matter all that much. Um, you at least want to capture and see, look, this, this, uh, command center up here is actually the one right next to their spawn point. You want to deal with that first and foremost, right? Grab that, grab that sucker back and then come in here and force and deal with the middle and then move on to deal with the other one. Pedro is going to knock down some more bombers. Good idea. Um, able to get that one. Very good. Diving on our tier 7 heavy down there. Okay, so Diogo is over here as well. Um, he gets popped. And... Oh, no. Yeah, Diogo and Knight both go down. But it looks like Diogo got the A7M before he went. Unfortunately, it's still going to be enough to flip the zone. His AL-20 is here as well. Right. They've also, in the meantime, captured this zone behind us, the one by our spawn zone. So that's an unfortunate turn of events, right? Even though we've garnered a 90-point lead up there at the top. Um, good call to burn him down. Go ahead and burn the IL-10 down here as well while we're here, probably. That's what I would do anyway. Bomb trapping. Oh, the bomb trap. No. Uh, Knight has spawned on the right-hand side, but it looks like he's headed back to the middle. I don't know. I might head over there, um, again, given the value of that sector. We do have the RB-17 over here. Uh, headed over to the other garrison to take it. Yeah, we got a lone multi-roll over here is not going to be able to do that, um, unfortunately. All right, so Knight has switched. He's headed over here as well. I missed the rockets going off at some point, didn't I? Maybe that was the other 20 points when we flipped that other zone with him dropping the rockets from up high. The little potato in the middle, is that going to be enough? Oh, just shy. Just shy of what it needs to be. But that's okay. Might be something a strafing run can handle. Uh, oh, it looks like we lost a couple of friendlies in this zone as well. For it to go bound that high on um, capture points so quickly. So good call, doing a little strafing run. That's a light target. I'm surprised the light target is still up. Usually it's like an armored target left over, right? When that sort of stuff sort of happens in the background. Good. Got this one flipped. In the meantime, though, the enemy's gotten two more zones. Something happened to our RB-17. It did not capture that zone. Looks like one of the heavies probably popped it. Uh, we do have five of the command center bombers over here, so that could do the trick, depending on how many of the ground targets are still left standing. Um, if the RB-17 knocks some of them down and they haven't respawned, then even a full bomber flight of uh, five will not be able to flip the zone, right? So in the middle here, uh, yeah, worry, worry about the, the uh, I think he thought he could get that one in one pass, and he almost did. But uh, we want to hit this guy, and honestly, I'd move on. I'd move on and hit this ASAP. Burn him out. You got 32 seconds till squall line. Go take this thing, and then hunt down the bombers, right? That's what I would do, because you take that thing, You've got these two, you're launching your own bomber flights. Um, they're not launching bomber flights anymore, and then you track down their bombers and uh, force them to capitulate. There's also um, the ground attacker down there. He's low on health, so really you want him to survive another 10 seconds, right? Uh, is he gonna do it? So Diego's down there, this zone is flipped. Somebody's on him, oh, the J21. They're locked on to him. Ensuing drama here. Hey, he's just coming up in a spiral. That's a great way to deal with bots. Uh, just come up in a spiral, force them to deal with uh, vertical. Um, kind of see where to go from there. It's a shame, though, because we really do want that IL-10 gone, and it looks like struggling with it. Ooh, this is getting, yeah. No. 
he going to respawn? Were we at Squall Line? This could be bad. Okay, there we go. There's the Squall Line. So we're, we're going to come back in one last ride. Unfortunately, Knight may have crashed afterwards. Nope, he's over there. Good, good, good. So this is bad. Three zones, two. They got less than 100 capture points, and they got bombers in the air. Right? So our bombers are going to flip that zone now. I'm sure it's respawned stuff. Pedro's going to flip this zone, if at all possible. And... Oh, so it just lost, lost an F2G in the zone. Bomber. Good rollout. Ten more. Potato and out. Yep, there you go. That's that zone. Now move on. Great. So the the bomber flight captured this one. We captured this one. This is one of the, the joys of the P-82. It, is, it has the ordnance and the guns to flip a zone fairly quickly. Especially if you don't have to deal with enemy uh, pilots in that zone, right? And now we can just push on straight for this command center. Looks like we've already got the IL-20 out and the, the arrow out. And then the VB-10 just went down. This is good. This is good. We, we're at a tipping point here, right? Um, we've got... So if you want to run the numbers in your head real quick. Uh, so they're getting three points every five seconds. They need 32 points to win. Divide that by three. They've got 10 ticks before the game is over. 11 ticks before the game is over. Yeah, 11 ticks times five seconds. So there's 55 seconds left in the game from this point. Um, I don't know if you're good at math in your head or not, but 55 seconds. We got 55 seconds to flip this. Um, in the meantime, in those same 55 seconds or 11 ticks, we'll get 120 plus 12, 132 points, which is 740 something. So not enough. So in 50 seconds, 55 seconds, if we don't flip this zone, this game is over, and that's going to be really important. There's one, two, three, four, five uh, planes left, including both their bombers. That's not good, um, and they have a com uh, bomber flight coming in. That's not good, two of them. So this is going to be a tight, tight 60-second race to the finish line. Let's see if Pedro can pull it out. So he's going to go down low first. I usually work top to bottom, but he sees a quick 80 capture points right there. Is that 80, 70, 50? I don't remember what it is. All right, good. So we're down to 70 left. We need two of these planes still. There you go. One more plane. By the way, 14 points, right? So times three. We've got five more ticks. Five times five. We have 25 seconds left to flip this zone. You're just going to burn rockets in there and do it. There we go. And that's supremacy. Uh, supremacy, 11 seconds are 11 points left before the other team would have won at three points a tick every five seconds. Uh, that would have needed what, four ticks. So 20, we're 20 seconds away from losing the game at this point. That's pretty crazy. That's about as close as it gets, right, uh, for doing this. Now they're probably going to uncap one of these, uh, especially with the bombers over there. We're getting 15 points every second at this point. We need 62, so we need four five ticks to win the game so 25 seconds and we win the game actually not 25 seconds sorry because it's to be every second so we need about five seconds to win the game two seconds to win the game one second to win the game and there's the buzzer wonderful wonderful quick flip right there that's very good that's an 18,000 point game uh, that'll run any day. Winged Legend, Conquer, 450 capture points, and then Paladin, Fighter, you know, a couple of these other things. And then first rank in combat group. Uh, lovely, lovely match. Uh, only uh, one bomber kill. That's why this is not a five star um, you know, match in this, but doesn't matter. Um, to secure the victory, the zones needed to be capped. And tier eight, this is kind of where that you're starting to get to that point where you have to start dealing with bombers a little bit. Um, if the enemy has them, in this case, they didn't really. Um, and we had that altercation in the middle that chopped us up a little bit and forced the respawn. So uh, great match. The RB-17 obviously did some good things as well. 
Donnie and Knight uh, held their own in the middle there, kind of gumping up, uh, gumming things up for the enemy team and uh, allowing for the comeback to happen. Uh, there's a saying in football, and since we are at the beginning of football season here, that uh, defense starts comebacks, but offenses finish them. And that's true. You have to get a good defensive stop, and then you got to use that as a launching pad to take the initiative back from the enemy. And that's essentially what happened here, uh, because with Frylocks and Ailey going down at the buzzer, that allowed the space. That was the defensive play that was needed to allow the space to kind of have that pace of capture for Pedro's team to go up and over where it needed to be to win this. Games like this are exactly why we, we, we play World Warplanes, right? We love close matches like this. Wonderful game. Uh, These are fairly balanced teams in terms of what they can do um, and in terms of kind of level. So that's good in that. Um, you know, just a, a really solid match overall and, uh, and a great replay. So thanks to Pedro for sending this one on to me. I appreciate it. Well played. Um, and uh, if you guys have your P82s, might be time to take them out of the hangar and dust them off and let them rip uh, in the course of this week. Uh, so you've got, I think, two days left, by the way, to pick up the JLA, uh, the Tier 8 Chinese Premium Jet Fighter, which is pretty good. I've been trying to get a video together for that, but um, again, server and random chance are not cooperating with me, but uh, I'll try and get one out. I think it goes off sale on Wednesday, um, so it may, may come out after the sale. Uh, but if you do pick it up, I'll at least uh, show you how I've got mine set up and uh, some of the things it can do. And uh, if you're not picking it up, maybe a good time to learn some of the weaknesses of it as well, because it does have a couple to speak of. So hope your week has started off right. Good luck and good hunting to you. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to see in these videos or a topic you'd have me cover, please let me know. I'm more than happy to do that for you. And if you see me in game, send me a little wave or salute. Um, it's always good to chat with all of you. So until next time, good luck, good hunting.